some of the biggest benefits of like progress, whether it's like quitting smoking and all that kind of stuff, is in the is in the days after. It's the integration of the experience. So maybe you open up the brain to the neuroplasticity, but then there's like work to be done. It's not you're like you shake up something in in the, in the biology of the brain, but you have to do then it's work. Absolutely. Now, a friend of mine who's a, a physician, he says. Um, who's quite open to this idea that psychedelics could play a, a real role in, in real medicine, he says um, better living through chemistry still requires better living. <laughs> and and I think it's a, it's a beautiful statement. I wish I had said it, Be, um, but he gets the credit. But the plasticity window opens. And then as you said, what are you gonna do in the two weeks, three weeks, four weeks afterward? Because that's the real opportunity. But those psychedelic experiences are really a case of an amplified experience inside of an amplified experience. So much so that everything seems relevant yeah. and it's um it's it's fascinating i mean i my hope is that the ai and machine learning and the brain machine interface and all that will eventually be merged with the psychedelic treatments right. so that you an individual can go in take whatever amount of whatever safe for them working with a clinician and really direct the plasticity while maybe stimulating the orbital frontal medial orbital frontal cortex or increasing the observer or decreasing the observer in the brain or decreasing the amygdala i mean it's doable it's doable with transcranial magnetic stimulation and it's for shutting down activity and it's doable with ultrasound ultrasound now allows very focal activation of particular brain regions through the skull non-invasively. So it's, it's approaching the same kind of uh, therapy from different angles. One of AI is the computational side, sort of injecting like the robotics, I I injecting like, maybe you can even think about it as like electricity, the electrical approach mm -hmm. versus then like the the chemical approach. Absolutely, and then the, psycho and then the psychology is, yeah. is subjective, right? So it's gonna take some real um, understanding of what that person's, um, lexicon is like, you know, that wasn't a pun, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, it's terrible. I'm, I'm like the worst. That's the one thing I know from the feedback on my podcast. My jokes are terrible, but I never claim to be funny. The, the, uh, but somebody who they really trust and understands when somebody says, you know, for a very stoic person, like I'm imagining uh, you interviewed the great Dan Gable, Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know anything about Dan, but can you imagine like you asked Dan, like, you know, how you feel about something while on one of these drugs? And like, <laughs> I mean, his languaging might, if he says that was troubling, it might mean that it was very troubling or not troubling at all. So people are, language is a poor guide because if I say I'm upset, how upset is that? Well, that's very subjective. So you need, we need can you build a tool for that? Can you build an AI tool for that? Yeah, deeper. Yeah, well, maybe that's well, the eye. Maybe that's our. This that's what the eyes could reveal. So language is not just words; it's everything together, and that's one of the fascinating things about the eyes and the window to the soul. I mean, they express so much: the face, the eyes, the body. Um, I mean, Lisa talks about that: the communication of emotions. It's a, it's a super complex.